Information cascade is a very general phenomenon. It can happen and often happens when people are unsure about decisions they should make and try to observe other be others' behavior uh, in an attempt to infer what information the other people might have had. So one common example is observing that a certain type of cell phone is popular by seeing it in many people's hands uh, and inferring that these other people might must have thought that, that it's a good phone without really knowing whether these people are happy with their new phones. Or symmetrically, when you read in the news that certain product doesn't sell well and infer that other people must think it's not a good product uh, without really having a good proof whether or not it's a good or bad product. What's interesting here is that if everyone has a little bit of different information or independent information, if they were to put together all this information and collectively try to make a decision, they almost surely had enough information to make the right decision. But making decisions one at a time and only observing the action of others without knowing the information can cause information cascade and lead to bad decisions. So to understand this phenomena, let's think about a general setup. So there is a product that you might want to buy, and it might be good or bad. Um, let's assume we, you have an a priori probability that this product is good, say based on the history of the company or the history with this kind of product. And let's say that the probability that this product is good is some value P. And similarly, then the remaining probability, one minus P, this product is bad. Um, now, I also suppose a large number of people would like to buy the product if it's good, but rather not buy it if it's bad. To model this, uh, we're going to say that a person gets a value or utility for buying the product, which is VG. If it's a good product, it's a positive value. They would like to have it. But they get a negative value VB if the product is bad and they bought it, for example, because they send, spend money on the product. So, so far we have the product is good with some probability P resulting in a positive value VG and product is bad with probability one minus P in which case resulting in a negative value V of B. Now, in an attempt to think about whether the product is worth buying, it's natural to try to compute the expected value. So you get P times VG plus one minus P times VB for the expected value of uh, the product given the two probabilities. And let's assume this expected value is zero. So really you, you're undecided whether it's a good or bad idea to buy the product. Um, given you don't know whether it's going to have a positive or negative value. So a natural thing to do is try to do research. You do some online research to determine the product quality. You read reviews, you read about tests, uh, you maybe try it out in the store. And all this might give you either a high impression, a good impression of product quality, or a bad impression. We're going to call this a signal, and we're going to say you either get a high signal or a low signal. A high signal is a suggestion that the product is more likely to be good, and a low signal is a, is a signal suggesting that the product might be bad. Um, unfortunately, your research is not perfect. So even if the product is good, you may end up with a negative impression, and even if the product is bad, you might get a good impression. But your, your research is, is suggestive or is more likely to result in a, in a correct impression than an incorrect impression. So let's say we have another parameter, we call it Q, is the probability that you get the correct impression. You get a high quality signal on a good product with probability Q, more than half. And you get a bad impression even on a good product with a smaller probability of minus Q. And similarly, if the product is bad, then you only get a good impression, a high signal, with a smaller probability of minus Q, and with a higher probability Q, you get a bad impression. After all, the product was bad. So with all this setup, let's think about the first decision maker. 
what should she decide? So here's a person who knows that the probability that the product is good is some p. She knows that the expected value is zero, so she wants to do some online research. If she gets a high signal from, you, from her research, then um, what should she decide based on the high signal? Remember, the high signal is a suggestion that the product might be good. She should be interested in the probability that the product is good given her high signal. Uh, I would assume, or I hope to assume, that high signal is, increases the probability, that is the product being good, had, given the high signal has a probability above p, which case the expected value now is is, comes out positive, and she should buy the product. To be more formal, let's use Bayes' rule to compute the probability the product is good given the high signal. Bayes' rule, came with probability a product is good, times the probability of high signal given that the product is good, divided by the probability that you're getting a high signal uh, at all. So the numerator is easy to evaluate. P is for the probability is good, and Q is the probability of getting the high signal given that the product is good. Uh, the denominator of probability of high signal is always the tricky one. So if we think about that part, probability that we're getting a high signal, it comes in two parts. You can get a high signal because the product is good or because it's bad. Uh, the first part, if the product is good, is coming with the probability that the product is good times the probability of a high signal given that the product is good. So this, these terms are Q times P, respectively. The second part comes from getting a high signal despite the fact that the probability that the, that the product is actually bad. So the product is bad with probability 1 minus P, in which case you get a high signal with probability 1 minus Q, and this is the second part of the probability that the high signal showed up. So given this expression for the high signal, we can go back and substitute it into our base, base rule formula, and we get that uh, the probability that the product is good given the high signal is P times Q divided by P times Q plus 1 minus P times 1 minus Q. Okay, this is a pretty complicated expression. It would help to notice that Q is more than a half, and hence Q is bigger than 1 minus Q. Remember, Q was that we got a correct signal, and 1 minus Q that we're getting an incorrect signal. Um, so if I take uh, the 1 minus Q in the expression and replace it by Q in the denominator, that makes the expression smaller, and also allows me to pull Q out in the expression in the denom denominator, and we get P T times Q divided by P times, or Q times, P plus 1 minus P, which is 1, so altogether evaluates to P. And indeed, what we learned is that the probability the product is good given the high signal is now bigger than P. So getting the high signal increased the prob probability that the product is good, and as a result, increased our expected value, and indeed, the person should buy. Uh, similarly, if she gets a low signal, Research is suggesting the product is bad, that decreases the probability that the product is good, and hence makes the expected value negative, not worth buying. So, so far we saw about the single decision maker. Uh, what we really are interested in is a sequence of decision makers. So, in after a decision maker one, who we just anal analyzed, we're going to start thinking a second person, a second decision maker, who, may, who does maybe his or her own research about the product, but also observes the first person, observes whether or not the first person bought the product. And this is what we're going to consider in the next segment.